we will go on now to look at uh, what is called as Carnot's cycle. So, Sadi Carnot was an engineer in US, he worked in uh, the 1800s and came up with the thought experiment of what would be the most efficient uh, engine or a refrigerator. So, he also came up with theorems, but before that we look at the cycle itself. So, let us say you have a system undergoing a cycle. So, the system has receives heat from a heat exchanger, isothermally it you get uh, some amount of heat and then you do some amount of work in a reversible fashion and then it rejects some amount of heat in a reversible fashion which means this also has to be isothermal heat transfer and then there is a process where you give in work into this system in a reversible fashion. So, you have 4 reversible processes and we have discussed already that the maximum efficiency you can get is only when you use reversible processes. So, we have 4 reversible processes, 2 of them involve heat transfer, one is heat coming into the system, one is heat going out of the system and we have 2 reversible processes which involve work transfer, one is work coming into the system, one is work going out of the system. So, the question is what is the highest efficiency I can get for a system running in any fashion. So, Cardinal came up with this cycle which he said would have the highest efficiency of all. So, you have this, this system at some state A, you transfer some amount of heat from one to state 1 to state 2. In this process the temperature is constant, so we have isothermal heat addition. While you transfer this heat, you are transferring it isothermally and this piston is also expanding. So, you can also call this as isothermal expansion. So, it is either isothermal heat addition or isothermal expansion, both are the same and this piston moves up to some uh, location. So, during this there is heat added this expansion because you are adding heat, so there is work produced and temperature is constant. So, this is our first process. So, this process happens over here for example, in some kind of a heat exchanger of this kind, isothermal heat addition with some amount of expansion. Then we are trying to get work out from this cycle. So, after adding this uh, heat, what we are doing is we are letting it expand further adiabatically. So, adiabatic heat, uh, I mean adiabatic process, there is no heat addition, so the 2 Q 3 is 0. We have expansion further, for example, in a turbine or in a piston cylinder arrangement or so on. Uh, so, if you have a piston cylinder arrangement and you have further expansion, you get some amount of work, this piston moves up further between here and here, you get some amount of work and we will see later on that is a reversible process and we will see that lay entropy is constant, but right now we do not know what it is, but we have an adiabatic reversible process in which some work is produced and heat transfer is 0. Then what we see is we have the next process where we have heat rejection. So, you remove some amount of heat from here to here, so you have heat rejection. So, there is heat transfer, this heat transfer also has to be reversible we know that it can only be reversible if temperature is constant. So, we have isothermal heat transfer, we are removing heat out of this which means this is piston is now, now going to come down. So, there is work done on the system. So, the system boundary reduces. So, you have PDV kind of work if you use this kind of cylinder piston arrangement and this work is negative. So, there is work done on the system and this is coming down, but at the same time there is also heat rejection, heat is removed. So, we have heat going out because this is coming down we would call it as work being done on the system. So, we would either call this as isothermal heat rejection because heat is going out of this or we can also call it as isothermal 
contraction or compression because compression refers to essentially reduction in volume and we see that the volume is going from V3 which is large to V4 which is smaller. So, we would usually call this as isothermal compression or isothermal heat rejection. In the same fashion here we had Q2 which is added 1 Q2 and we had this piston moving out from here to here. So, we would call that as essentially 1 W2 and we have w, uh, V2 greater than V1. So, volume has increased between here and here we would have V3 greater than V2 because there is some work being done because of expansion between these two. And the last process here is going from 4 back to the original state so that we can do this in a cycle. So, we have now had some amount of compression or the piston moving down. What we can do is we can compress it further by doing work. So, we can adiabatically do work on it, push it down adiabatically. So, we have no heat transfer. So, 4 q 1 is 0 and we push this down. So, we do work on it 4 to 1 and this is also a reversible adiabatic process. So, in this fashion we come back to the original state. So, to recap we had this piston cylinder arrangement, we heated it isothermally, it expanded to a certain extent, we allowed it to expand further adiabatically, it expanded here. Then we removed heat, so the piston started going down which is what we call as isothermal compression and then we pushed it down adiabatically which is adiabatic compression. So, these four processes complete a cycle of the Carnot cycle. So, we can look at the Carnot engine. So, schematically it is shown as taking heat from some reservoir at high temperature at some temperature T h, some Q h amount of heat is given here. It rejects some amount of heat Q l. The net work, the difference between the work done in the expansion process and the work done in the compression process is essentially W and this is a reversible engine by definition. Carnot's engine is a, def, uh, is a reversible engine. So, if we, we will sort of skip this graph for the moment, but let us look at this graph because we are familiar with PV diagrams. So, if we look at the PV diagram, so we know the process 1 to 2 which we showed uh, over here is essentially isothermal heat addition. So, if it was an ideal gas the process 1 to 2 would have a relation P V equal to constant. So, that looks something like this. The process 2 to 3 over here we saw is essentially this process is adiabatic sorry reversible adiabatic expansion. All of these are also reversible. All processes in the Carnot cycle are reversible which is why we are having heat addition at isothermal conditions so that we can reverse it. But there should also be no other irreversibilities which means there cannot be any friction, there cannot be viscosity and so on. So, this is reversible adiabatic expansion. This was reversible adiabatic compression. So, the first process is isothermal which for an ideal gas would look like P V equal to constant. Second process is adiabatic expansion which would look like P V to the power gamma equal to constant. We saw that P V to the power gamma equal to constant is steeper sorry is steeper than P V equal to constant. So, therefore, this looks steeper here. These are expansion processes which means the volume is increasing as you go to the right. So, from pressure P 1 to P 2 it is an expansion process. So, 2 the volume is higher. From 2 to 3 it is further expansion. So, the volume at 3 is higher than the volume at 2. And then we have the an isothermal compression process or heat rejection. So, we are going from 3 to 4 the volume is reducing and we are compressing it. So, the pressure is increasing and from 4 to 1 we have adiabatic compression where we are there is no heat transfer, but we are 
pushing it together so the volume is reducing and the pressure is increasing as PV uh, gamma equal to constant. So this completes the Carnot cycle. So we 1 to 2 again is isothermal heat addition, 2 to 3 is adiabatic expansion, 3 to 4 is isothermal compression or isothermal heat rejection and 4 to 1 is adiabatic reversible compression. So here there is some 1 Q2 amount of heat and some 1 Q2, uh, 1 W2 amount of work. Here there is <coughs> no heat transfer and 2 Q3 amount of work. Here there is heat transfer out of this as 3 Q4 and there is some work being done going from 3 to 4. So we have that as 3 W4. What we see is that this heat transfer would be negative because it is heat lost by the system. This heat transfer is positive. This work interaction is positive because it is expansion. This is 0 and this is positive. Here we see that the heat transfer out of the system is negative. Work being done on the system is negative and in this process there is no heat transfer going from 4 to 1 and work transfer going from 4 to 1 is there and this is again negative because there is compression. The system is becoming smaller and we are doing work on it so this would also be negative. So these are the heat and the work interactions for this uh, Carnot cycle. So after doing this, so Carnot also came up with two theorems. He said no engine can be more efficient than a reversible engine which is essentially Carnot engine operating between the same high temperature and low temperature reservoirs. So if you have a high temperature reservoir at some temperature and some other reservoir at some other temperature, what Carnot said is that only a reversible engine will have the highest efficiency in operating between these two and a reversible engine is Carnot's engine because Carnot's engine is the only reversible engine we have here. So uh, we have the statement of Carnot and then what he also said is that the efficiency of all reversible engines operating between the same constant temperature reservoirs are the same irrespective of the working fluid. So he said if you fix the temperature of the highest and the lowest temperatures of the reservoirs between which you are operating or any two reservoirs, if I run my reversible engine and you run your reversible engine, both will have the same efficiency. And what he also went on to say is that it does not depend on the nature of the working fluid. So if I run my reversible engine using say ideal gas, you run yours using a liquid or a perfect gas or a non-ideal gas, it does not matter. As long as we run reversible engines, we will both get the same efficiency. So because it does not depend on the working fluid and these engines are reversible, what it follows is that the efficiency of the reversible engine depends only on the temperature of the heat source and the temperature of the heat sink. So it does not matter what substance I have here. So if I fix TH and TL, all car reversible engines or Carnot engines running between these will have the same efficiency. It does not depend on what substance is there. Therefore, the efficiency must depend only on TH and TL. So that is essentially what Carnot said. So these theorems can be shown to be consistent with the second law or what we can also show in some fashion is that if we violate the Carnot theorems, then we would violate the second law. So the proof of this Carnot theorem is that if the second law is correct, then the Carnot theorem must be correct because any violation of the Carnot theorems will lead to a violation of the second law. So we can look at one of the examples of this. We can prove this in several ways. This is one way. So let us say you have a reversible engine. So a reversible engine takes heat QH from a high temperature reservoir. R shows it is a reversible engine. It rejects QL of amount of heat and it gives out W reversible amount of work. This is what an engine does. It takes in heat from a high temperature reservoir. 
reject some amount of heat and give some amount of work. Let us see we also have an irreversible engine which also does the same thing. It takes some QH amount of heat. So, we are saying with both of them we give the same amount of heat. This gives a different amount of work and rejects a different amount of heat. So, we have two engines both take same amount of work sorry same amount of heat. They do different amount of works and reject different amount of heat. So, this reversible engine by definition is reversible. So, what I can do is I can reverse it and run it as a heat pump or a refrigerator. So, what I can do is instead of taking out this QH and getting work, I can give it to work and transfer heat from the low temperature reservoir to the high temperature reservoir. So, let me do that. So, let me give this W reversible to this engine because it is a reversible engine it will then take the same amount of heat which is rejecting here it will take in and transfer the same amount of heat which was giving, given here back to TH. So, I can do that. I is an irreversible engine I cannot do this with I but R is a reversible engine I can do this with this engine. So, I now have this condition. So, let us say that so there is some engine this irreversible engine I which is more efficient than Carnot's engine R. Okay, R is reversible engine Carnot's engine Carnot says this is the most efficient but I do not agree with Carnot I say I am going to make an engine better than Carnot and I have made this engine I. So, my engine is more efficient so it gives more work for the same amount of heat transfer. So, let us say this gives W irreversible <coughs> sorry. So, it gives this W irreversible which let us say which I am claiming is more than what Carnot's engine would give. So, if that is the case then what I can do now is I see that this part I have heat transfer from a high temperature reservoir amount of QH I have heat transfer to a high temperature reservoir an amount of QH. So, I am getting QH on going up here QH coming down here I can get rid of this reservoir. So, I can do that. I just connect this to this because they are this heat temperature heat transfer is the same reservoir one is going up one is coming down I just kick off the reservoir completely. So, then I have this case where I have this is refrigerator uh, R or a heat pump which is taking some amount of heat and giving it to this irreversible engine. Now, this W is giving me more work than what I need to give here because my initial assumption is that W irreversible is more. So, that means what I can do is this gives more work than this. So, whatever I need here I can take out from this and the remaining I get outside separately. So, let us say for example, this is 100 joule I need 50 joule here. So, from this 100 I can give 50 back here and the remaining 50 I get outside to use which is useful work. So, what I can do is I can connect this to this take whatever I need I need W reversible for this I take it from this irreversible engine and the remaining whatever it was producing completely minus what I need here is now the excess work which is available for me to use for anything else which I want to do. So, if I now simplify this further I am getting out this amount of heat here QH and giving back this amount of heat QH here. So, I can now consider both this together as a system then the net effect of the system is it is taking this QL amount of heat over here and giving out W amount of work. What we also see is from the first law if we write the first law for this system or for this say for this system first law over here is that QH <coughs> is equal to Q L reversible plus W reversible this plus this is equal to this magnitude wise and over here what we have is that Q H is equal to W irreversible plus Q L irreversible and what we saw is that what we have assumed initially is that W irreversible is greater than W reversible. So, we said let 
let us assume we have an engine which is better than Carnot's engine. So, W irreversible is greater than W reversible. So, if W irreversible is greater than W reversible, this is more than this and both these are equal. So, if this is more, then this has to be less. So, it is like I have for example, 6, let us say this is 10. So, I have this value as 6 and this value as say some uh, 4. So, therefore, this has to be less than this or Q L reversible is more. So, Q L reversible is greater than Q L irreversible. So, if I look at the heat transfers here, this is taking out more heat putting in less heat. So, the net effect here is to take out heat from T L. So, the net effect of if I put both these two together as a system is I am taking out heat from the steel reservoir. The, the magnitude of that is QL reversible minus QL irreversible and I am giving work out. So, what this says is I have now if I can have an engine which is better than Carnot's engine even if it is irreversible <coughs> if it runs in a cycle what I can do is I can take heat from one reservoir and produce work. I can do this if I have this kind of a system. But what we also already saw is that the Kelvin Planck statement told us that you cannot do this kind of a thing. Kelvin Planck statement of the second law of thermodynamics says it is impossible when you have a system running in a thermodynamic cycle to produce work with heat transfer from a single reservoir. So, if I could do this I would be in violation of the Kelvin Planck statement of the second law and since the second law is correct this is not possible. So, what we see is that if the second law is correct and we have every reason to believe it is correct then I cannot have a, ref, a heat pump or a I cannot have in this case a heat engine which is more efficient than a Carnot engine. So, we have proved this in the case of by assuming that we have a heat engine which is better than a Carnot engine. We can also prove the same thing by assuming that there is a heat pump which is better than a Carnot heat pump. So, what we see is that we cannot have this kind of a case uh, because any violation of this would be a violation of the second law. Therefore, Carnot's engine which is a reversible engine is the most efficient engine we can have and a Carnot engine is reversible which means if it runs in reverse it becomes a heat pump or a refrigerator and that is still the most efficient heat pump or refrigerator we can have. Uh, there are also a lot of other things we can prove. For example, Carnot says that between any two temperatures all reversible heat engines have the same efficiency. We can use a similar approach to prove that that must be true because if there was one reversible heat engine which is more efficient than some other reversible heat engine then by the same logic we should be able to run it in such a way that we run with one heat uh, reservoir and get work which cannot be possible. So, therefore, all reversible heat engines between the same two temperatures must have the same efficiency and if they have to have the same efficiency with when they are operating between the same temperature reservoirs then it follows that it does not matter what substance is there inside because in the same logic if I had a uh, Carnot engine operating with gas which has a higher efficiency than Carnot engine operating with say liquid then I can combine these two and have heat transfer from a single reservoir and get work which Kelvin Planck says is not possible. So, therefore, what we see is that violation of either of the Carnot's theorems is a violation of the second law and uh, that is not essentially feasible or it is not possible.